Are you interested in getting your child to go to school when they refuse? Well, you are not alone. We are having a serious problem in our culture right now. I am Nicolene Peck and I teach parenting, good communication and how to build strong family bonds all over the world through the lens of the principle self-government. And in this video, we're talking about getting them out the door. <laughs> talking about school avoidance issues and what we can do about that. We're going to talk about thinking outside of the box in handling this school avoidance problem and what type of plan we can put in place to help our child get out the door to school. School avoidance is an increasingly difficult problem facing so many families in our society today. In fact, I read an article not long ago all about school avoidance. It was like three pages long in this newspaper about how people have been studying the school avoidance issue, how schools have been trying to support children and inspire them to get there, and what they're doing to help children combat this school avoidance problem. It was definitely discussed in the article that school avoidance, which by the way, a term I do not like because I think people have always had school avoidance you know like who really wants to go I mean I know I faked sick a couple of times so that I wouldn't have to go when I was young I mean I think anybody can experience school avoidance but it's becoming more of a situation I would say especially because people aren't knowing how to handle it and they're not doing anything about it so one of the reasons that we have such a school avoidance problem is mental health issues are on the rise people are feeling more and more unable to handle handle daily life, they're feeling more fragile, we're having a major issue with children feeling like they can even just get out of the car or even put their clothes on. Um, depression is increasing, anxiety is increasing, so that's going to increase a person not wanting to go and do something that they don't want to do. But here's the thing is we have this mentality in our culture that if we feel something that we should follow that. So, okay, well I feel feel like I don't want to go to school so I think I'm not going to. Well instead we should be thinking to ourselves I feel like I don't want to go to school so I guess I'm going to have to tell myself to do a hard thing. I'm going to have to go anyway even if I don't want to. I have to make myself do it. So it used to be that our culture was a do hard things kind of culture and now our culture has shifted and we're really babying people emotionally to the point that they're not thinking that it's even safe to step outside of their comfort zone. Many children are reporting to their parents who are reporting to me that they don't feel safe going to school. Well that's a big issue because every child is a learner and they are at this stage in life where going to school is like the main thing that they're doing with their lives right then. So what do we do about that? Parents, are not sure. Do we just let the child fail and not go? Do we make them go? Do we get very heavy handed? Do we call truancy officers and police officers to get the children to go? How many people can we involve? In fact, there are some people in the therapeutic fields that are now specializing in school avoidance issues because nobody else knows how to handle this problem. And they have waiting lists that people will be on for years and years to try to get their child to desire to go to school. Okay, now I know as parents we might be super frustrated. We might feel like we're doing everything we can. But clearly what is going on is not working. I'm guessing that's why you're finding yourself here watching this video because you're thinking there must be something else that I can do. Well, first let's start thinking out of the box here. Okay, the box is this. The way most people think is, I have a child, my child needs to learn to get a job, to go to college, to move on with their life. It's a requirement that all children go to school and so perfect. They have to learn, they have to go to school, so they will go there. And we're going to take them to school and if they don't go to school, well that's not even an option because they have to, right? So suddenly when the child says, I'm not going to school, 
And the parent's like, well, but I've got a job. So I've got to go somewhere. I can't just sit here all day and try to force you to go to school. And so the parents will get into sometimes power struggles with their children. They'll try babying the children. They'll try promising the child things. They'll try um, getting aggressive and fearful with the children. They try so many different tactics, which by the way, are all manipulative tactics. And they will try all of those tactics to get the child to just get in the car and get to school. Here's an outside of the box thought. What if just because the government says go to school and just because the child is a learner, what if that doesn't make where they're going to school the right place? Now, if you subscribe to this channel, then you probably have seen that I have a lot of videos on education. And that's because I've done some pretty outside of the box things with education. So most of the stuff here is about self-government, about parenting, but parenting and education, those are very closely linked. In fact, what the parent chooses for the education of the child is part of the parenting for that child. So I've got to be honest here. If I have a child who's like, I'm bullied at school, it's not safe at school, then I might be thinking, is school the best environment for my child? What's really happening there? Are they getting bullied? Is someone putting pressure on them to do something they know they shouldn't do? Or are they socially unprepared? Has my child not been prepared to carry on conversations with people and to problem solve? Have I done all of that for them and thereby disabled them a little bit? to handle their own problems? Have they been on technology so much that they don't know how to just start conversations with people in a healthy way and feel confident about their abilities to discuss? Now, just to be fair, no child feels completely confident in their communication abilities. They're all second guessing that for quite some time. I think sometimes even into their 20s. We all want to do the right social thing and sometimes it takes some learning time. But some children think that they have to just innately know that or something's wrong with them. So are they lacking confidence because they're not thriving in the social culture. What can I do about that? Well, one big time out of the box thing that you could do is you could homeschool them. Now someone is thinking, no way, she didn't just say homeschool was the solution. It's not the total solution. In fact, I'm going to give you some what to do's if homeschool is not something that fits your family. But I couldn't be completely honest with myself if I didn't bring that up. And that's because some of my children were homeschooled. My biological children were homeschooled. My children that were foster children that came to to my home could not be homeschooled so they ended up going to the public school but I'll tell you what the children that have turned out the best socially and mental health wise and everything else and the ones who have done hard things those are my biological children that were actually homeschooled and that's because they had a really good foundation built underneath them now not everybody homeschools the same I'm just saying it's an option so what would that do for your child because I know some people are thinking yeah, no, running away from school is not going to teach them that they need to do a hard thing because now they're thinking they get whatever they want. Well, it may not be a permanent solution. It might be a temporary solution just to get past this rough patch. So what you might say is, okay, it looks like school might not be a super good fit for you right now, or we're having a hard time with just our basic social skills. We need to have some social training. We need to learn some skills and then we'll get you ready to get back to school. Cause I know you want to go back to school with your friends, but right now you're not ready. And so what we're going to do is we're going to homeschool you. Now your homeschool is not going to be about math and reading and writing as much. I mean, obviously you'll do some of those things, but your purpose for your homeschool is going to be to help socially prepare that child, which means that the homeschool is going to be lots of discussion with you every day and technology will not be part of it. Now that is outside of the box. I recognize that. A lot of people don't even like how that sounds, especially since you're watching YouTube. I get it. But here's the thing. If you could remove that technology for a short period of time and you can talk with them throughout the day, discuss things, read to them, have meaningful conversations with grandparents, shopkeepers, other people, as you take them along throughout your day, that child will socially change. They will develop some confidence with talking with some people, even if it's just you and a few others, they will start to come out of that social shell just a little bit. And that's going to be an important step for them to make to conquer this problem. Then over time, once it seems like things have leveled out a little bit better and they're happily learning, growing and discussing with you, then you can make plans to transition them back to school if you feel like it's a fit. But if you feel like it just brings out the worst in them, then maybe you can say, well, 
lesson learned, good thing. But make sure they start a business, start working at a job when they're in their high school years, all of those types of things, because they need to learn to take on all those responsibilities. And that's part of the social training that a parent does for their children. So don't let school ruin your relationship with your child. That's important. If you have to choose between your child going to school and your child having a good relationship with you, you've got to choose the good relationship with you, okay? So don't power struggle over this. If you say homeschool is not in the cards for us, there's no way I am going to do that, it's not feasible, whatever, then you've got to come up with another plan. So what you do is you talk to your child about self-government skills. So when a child has to get up in the morning, that's called giving themselves an instruction. When they have to get out the car and go into the school, they have to give themselves an instruction. When they're feeling anxiety and they don't like how it feels, it's uncomfortable, they have to give themselves a no answer and drop the subject. Okay, when they feel like someone's attacking them at school, they might need to disagree appropriately with them or accept it as a no answer and just drop the subject. But those skills, now that's three of the four basic skills that I've just talked about there. Those four basic skills can help them navigate the social climate of school, can help them decide that they can do hard things, can get them on the road to self-government where they are instructing themselves and moving themselves forward. But the only reason that they will use these skills is if you first teach the skills to them, and then second, after that, you correct the skills when something goes wrong. That's another important thing. What are you going to do to help them? You're gonna pre-teach the skills, you're gonna pre-teach how you're going to correct them, and then you are going to consistently correct them every time they don't drop the subject, every time they're not following instructions or disagreeing appropriately or accepting consequences or having a calm face, voice, and body. You're going to discuss it and you're gonna help them practice it the right way. If they can tell themselves to do those things in your home, then they can tell themselves to go to school too. You've gotta to lay a foundation. And that's really just the day-to-day -day communication with children. Lots of times the ones that are saying, I'm not doing it, I'm just not, are either A, in a really bad situation at school and they really shouldn't be there either, or B, have not had the opportunity to instruct themselves and, and take no answers enough and they just need more practice at it. Now I know anxiety is a real thing for many people and it's hard to just push off. But as parents, we have to keep telling our children it's possible. It's possible to tell the anxiety no and to say, I I'm not gonna cater to that. I'm gonna think something else instead. Changing the thought process inside the mind. It's possible to do. I have a whole training on my website, teachingselfgovernment.com about the value and mastery of emotions, parenting in a tech sexual world. Both of those trainings would be very beneficial to you. And I would say the first training though that you should probably take, take is the Teaching Self Government course training. If you want to improve your relationship and teach the child the skills they need and help them give themselves instructions and no answers like they need to be doing, then you might need the whole program. So if you go to teachingselfgovernment.com and you go to the shop, then there's something called the TSG Parenting Course or there's a three-day thing called the Parenting Mastery Training. If one of those is coming up, um, I highly recommend those as well. But get learning on those things and learn all of the skills that you need to self-government and then your child will hopefully be empowered enough to get out of the car. I see it happen all the time. People are able to overcome this hurdle. Be patient, don't take it personal, have your own calmness and I can help with that too. So go to teachingselfgovernment.com, I'll see you there.